I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'd like to welcome you to today's video where we're going to take a look at some potential connectivity issues between two host devices in the scenario that I have here on the board. We do have a trunk. We've got two switches involved, so we always have to be careful when we've got that extra little connection going on. But basically what I've got are two Cisco routers that are actually masquerading as PCs. We're going to send some pings from them. We're going to test connectivity. We're going to do some connectivity tests and try to figure out exactly why PC1 right now cannot ping PC2. You can see their IP addresses. They're obviously on the same subnet and they're actually sequential in their IP addresses. But right now, if we try to send a ping from 172.12.23.2 to 23.3, it's not going to go through. Notice that I terminated that echo before all five went out. If you want to terminate a ping or a trace route on a Cisco router, just simply do Control Shift 6 twice in a row. You'll notice it says type escape sequence to abort, but nobody tells you what it is. So that's what it is, and it's good if you're sending an extended ping. It's not too bad to wait for five ping packets to time out, which is our default. But if you're sending an extended ping, you could be there for quite a while if you don't know how to terminate it. So the first thing I would do in this scenario is just to make sure the IP addresses are correct. Now, obviously, on a real PC, you're going to do something a little bit different, but on a Cisco router, we simply look at the Ethernet interface itself, and I did a show interface E0. Physically, the interface is fine. Logically, it's fine. Line protocol is up, and there's our IP address. So, so far, everything looks pretty good there. Let's hop over to PC2, run the exact same test or exact same command, show interface E0. You can see the interface is up. Line protocol is up. IP address looks fine. So, so far, there everything seems to be fine. Now, let's take a look at that drawing again because one thing you have to watch out for is our trunk here between our two switches, switch one and switch two. So, we're going to take a look at those right now. And let's go to switch one first off. And it's a handy command show interface trunk. And this will show you immediately if you have any problems. And you can see that everything looks fine. The status is trunking. We actually have two ports on this one that are trunking. So it looks like we've got redundancy, FAST011 and FAST012. You can see that they're trunking and allowing VLANs 1 and 23. And everything looks fine there. We haven't looked at VLAN 23 yet, but we will. Let's run show interface trunk on switch 2 as well. And now, you see that we've got FAST 011 and 012 on this side as well. So it looks like we have two trunk links between the two switches. But one thing you don't see here is a mention of VLAN 23. So maybe that's a bit of a problem because remember, by default on a Cisco switch, devices that are in uh, different VLANs can't communicate unless we either configure router on a stick or we, we've got a multi-layer switch where we could create an SVI. But right now, let's just see if they're in the same VLAN or not. And back on switch one, you can always run show CDP neighbor on a Cisco device to see the directly connected devices. And we can see PC1 right here. And we can see that it's on local interface 02. We can also see that it's actually a 2520 router. So let's, uh, let's do show VLAN brief. And show VLAN brief tells us that that port is in VLAN 23. Let's go over to the other switch, switch 2, and run show CDP neighbor. And we can see here's PC2, the device ID. Local interface is 03, so let's take a look at show VLAN brief and see where that port is, see where that device is. And actually, it's over here in VLAN 1. By default, all of our ports are in VLAN 1. 
Now you might wonder why Switch 2 doesn't know about VLAN 23. It's because we're not running VLAN trunking protocol. I never mentioned that and you can't assume that it's running. If we had VTP running on these switches, at least Switch 2 would know about VLAN 23, but we still have to put port 03 into VLAN 23. So let's do that right now. Two commands we need to do that. Switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 23. Now the switch gives you a message the access VLAN does not exist creating VLAN 23. If you attempt to put a port into a VLAN that doesn't exist already, the switch will create it for you. But we're still better off running VTP and we'll talk about VTP in a future video. So now let's run show VLAN brief. We always trust but we always verify. And you can see now that FAST03 is in VLAN 23. Let's run show interface trunk here as well. And you can also see that we are now forwarding for VLAN 23. So let's go over to that PC now and we'll send the ping again and see if it goes through this time. First one might time out then the other four go through and then after that you're going to be fine. So now that the devices are indeed in the same VLAN they can communicate. We took a look at a couple of different things that it could have been. You know, it could have been just the interface shutdown on one of the PCs or one of our Cisco routers, actually. You know, so we did show interface zero. We saw the interface was open. Always do this first. <laughs> it can save you a lot of time and a lot of trouble. You always want to watch out for this because you know what this is going to look like if it's shut down, right? Let's go ahead and shut that down anyway. And we'll wait for our console message. There we go. Line protocol goes down. And remember, that's going to say administratively down. So if you're looking around on a Cisco router doing a little troubleshooting and you see administratively down, you know right away you've just got to open it right back up, which we'll do right now. And that's simply no shutdown, usually abbreviated as no shut. And in a moment, the connectivity will be back. But always check that first. If two switches are involved, always check the trunk and make sure the trunk is working correctly. And then finally, make sure that your hosts are indeed in the same VLAN because if they're not, by default on a Cisco switch, they're not going to be able to communicate. Hope you enjoyed this look around today. A little bit of troubleshooting exercise to get your mind clicking. Uh, if you're on YouTube, be sure to look to the right for related videos. I've got plenty of other Cisco videos here on YouTube. If you're on my site, www.thebryantadvantage.com, plenty of links in the blog and the main site where you saw this particular video. Regardless of where you are, make sure to head over to the tutorials page where I've got over 250 Cisco tutorials, fully illustrated tutorials, articles, and new videos every single day to help you get Cisco certified. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933. Thanks for watching the video, and I will see you on the website.